Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Lunar 2 Eternal Blue. It's episode like 32 or something like that. <laughs> We're in vain! Let's go, baby! I'm ready. My body is ready. Are we gonna battle? Are we gonna d -d 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 duel? Oh, shit. Now we just like popped out. What's up, fam? Amina, what are you doing? And where are you going in such a bizarre outfit? You're such a beautiful girl, you have to flaunt your beauty, not disguise it. I'd love to continue this chat, really I would, but I'm in a mega hurry, maybe later, okay? I mean, that's fair. Uh, wait, are we? <laughs> the, uh, the exit comes out in a different building now. Interesting. Oh. I love dozing off in the middle of the day. Naps are tiny slices of heaven. Jay, this guy's your favorite. But I had the strangest dream about a giant frog dressed in the finest robes. I always have bizarre dreams when I enter the magic guild. I don't know why, though. My dream about the giant frog was weird, but my dream about the Meridian models was wonderful. Let's sigh. Hello! Welcome, one and all, to the famous Black Rose item shop. Black Rose? They move the street up. Mm-hmm. Herbs. Spells all disabilities. Probably worth having a couple things. Nope. A primate? How fucking dare you. Miss Lamina, so wonderful to see you. It's been a long time since our last chat. Sit down for a cup of tea with a nosy old man. <laughs> Sorry, sir, but I'm in a hurry. We'll have tea some other time, I promise. Can't be a reference to Dot Hack. Not sure when the anime came out. Oh. I think... Primeape is like Gen 1, so I think, I think Pokemon came out before Dot Hack? Pretty positive. Yeah, absolutely, right? Pretty positive. Gotta be. Totally gotta be. In too much of a hurry for a cup of tea, you must miss your dear mother desperately. So many children your age feel alienated from their parents. I'm quite pleased that you don't. Let's see if this place got any things. My armor will protect its wearer, regardless of whether or not he wields magical power. We already have that. Magic gauntlet. Ooh. Two, please. Platinum armor. Ulk dress, we already have that. Magician robe. Steel helm, we already have that. Soul bandana, we already have that. Bejeweled hairpin. Oh, we had those. Guess not. Look. We're not completely flat broke. Crazy. We had platinum hair. That's what it was. Gotcha. Hello. Quite a couple boosts for Lamina there. That's pretty nice. Very happy about that. I just saw that snake Borgen and a few other guild dropouts slither into the mansion. I don't trust that pile of putrescence. Better check it out, Lamina. No kidding! We're on our way there right now, thank you. Borgen is heinously ugly, both inside and out. Be careful around him, Lamina. And make sure you don't have candy in your hand when he's around or you'll lose a finger. Wow, really? It's Lamina. I have to say that Vane is truly a wonderful town. 
Perhaps my fa- Uh, it's Lamina. Why is your face going through such painful looking contortions? Pain is a city! A city! It's not a town! Never has been, never will be! Maine is the city of history and tradition. Got that? Wow. That's a... Uh, that's a take, Lamina. Who are those muscle-bound oafs blocking the entrance to Maine? They won't let me pass them to pick jol Jollifruit. What? Um, actually? Right? It's the peak of the Jollifruit har harvesting season. Those brainless brutes don't care. Jala fruit harvesting season is terribly short. If I don't pick them soon, very soon, I'll have to wait until next year for the next crop. The fuck? Dear, oh my, oh goodness, whatever will I do? Oh, oh, Lamina, you're here. I'm worried about what Borgen may have done to your mother. Very worried. I wanted to ask someone for help, but then I realized that everyone else is as scared as I am. You're going to fight him? Need my help? I can swing a mean frying pan, you know? Calm down, Auntie. I'm not going to let Borgen get away with anything. Lamina, if, you're ever, if you ever need someone to swing a skillet around, call me and I'll come running. Now hurry to the mansion and find Miria before that bloated blowhard does. Why is Borgen doing this? What does he want with Miria? Oh my, oh dear, oh goodness. Like, if they know Borgen's such a bad dude, why is he even allowed in here? When I was little, I lost both of my parents in an accident, and I had to live by myself. I would wander into the forest near my house, and I would cry until I ran out of tears. Then one day, as I was crying, the forest went dark, and I was enveloped in shadow. I looked up, and saw a beautiful white bird, beautiful and huge. It filled my field of vision. Oh, did it. A beautiful white bird, eh? The giant white bird flew away from me, and I chased after it as fast as I could. The longer I chased, the deeper into the forest I went until I suddenly realized that I was lost. I turned around and there was a boy standing right in front of me. We introduced ourselves and became fast friends. The boy's name was Nal. He told me that he lived at the top of Tavern's Peak. When Nal found out that I was an orphan, he invited me to live with him at Tavern's Peak. Come with me and become one of the danger kids, he says. The danger kids? Do they do they change names every couple decades? I know you'll make a lot of friends. I accepted his invitation without hesitation. I didn't want to be alone anymore. Before we went to Tabin's Peak, though, I had to make Bana a promise to Nal. I had to promise that I would leave Tabin's Peak if I grew any taller than Nal was. I didn't mind making the promise because I never thought I'd have to keep it. Nal was older than me, so I never expected to catch up to him. Every child at Tavin's Peak was an orphan just like I was. We were never sad. Every day we smiled and laughed and played. We had so much fun. Days went by so quickly. I grew up without even realizing that I was. Before I knew it, the day arrived when I was taller than Nal. I kept my promise and left Tavin's Peak. Nal is basically Rufio. Yeah, basically. I mean, you say basically Rufio, Nala's is basically freaking Peter Pan at this point. Rufio is just the stand-in. Nala's not standing in for anyone. Nala is is the Peter Pan of this story. He's flying around rescuing orphans? Like, absolutely. I moved to Meribia with someone else who'd grown taller than Nala. A sweet girl who became my wife. Both of us treasure our time at Tabin's Peak as... Proud members of the Danger Kids. Oh, That's a sad... That's one, that's a lot of lot more dialogue from an NPC than we normally get. And two, that's sad. My husband and I have been married for many years, and I only have one regret. We're never able to start a family. We tried many times, but it wasn't meant to be. We wanted a big family. It's like the one we had when we grew up at the top of Tavin's Peak. We were a family of orphans, if that makes any sense, raised by a boy named Nal. After my husband and I moved here, we paid a visit to the Magic Library to research Tabin's Peak. We found a book which said that the peak didn't exist until about a thousand years ago. It also said the peak is really the rusted remains of the grindery that blasted Vane out of the sky. Okay, yeah, look, I get it. 
I get it, writers, but you set up a wonderful little, like, didn't exist until about a thousand years ago, right? Leading the uninformed to be like, a thousand years ago? That's around the time of Lunar. What? It's the... Is it the... And then you just tell them, right? Like, you take away the suspense when you just tell them. Don't do that. Put that information in a book somewhere that we find later on. <laughs> yeah, but the red mohawk, that's fair. I mean, Nal doesn't have a mohawk exactly, but it has the red and... Yeah, yeah I get you. That's I get you. Visually, he's a Rufio. Literally, he's... Peter Pan. <laughs> I guess maybe not literally. I mean, I mean, literarily. Liter is that the word I'm looking for? You get what I'm saying. Also said the peak is really the rusted remains of the grindery that blasted Vane out of the sky. Book said that some people think the story of Tabin's Peak is a fairy tale, but we don't. We grew up there, you know. Been many strange experiences. When we learned that Tabin's Peak was the grindery those experiences suddenly made sense. Cabin's Peak is a beautiful place. It was once a moving castle teeming with evil creatures. It's a bizarre story, but from my personal experiences, I know that it must be true. This was a fun house. I like this house. Good stuff going on in this house. Hey, guys. Let me now, Elsa! How did you get into vain without going through this entrance? Sorry, Dumbo, but a girl's got to have her little secrets. And don't you remember that I live here? Don't think about it too hard, because thinking is definitely not your strong suit. You may have entered vain, but you still can't do anything to stop Master Borgen. Try your hardest, little girl, and see how futile your efforts are. I mean, I'm surprised that they didn't just, like, start pulling wands. Blazing in the street. We just moved here from Azato, but I've already have a lot of friends. We're going to play over at the Magic Library later. Want to come and play with us? Sorry, but I can't talk right now. My friends are waiting for me at the Magic Library. We're going to play a game and see who can find the book with the naughtiest words in it. <laughs> okay. Of course you are. I brought my grandson here to escape the trouble in Azato. I'm not sure what's happening in that town, but I had to leave it before it got any worse. Vane is filled with good people who really care about each other. Lady Miria was even generous enough to construct this house for my grandson and me. This place is almost too much for just my, son, my grandson and me. Perhaps I should seek out a roommate. This place is like a dream. I can't thank Lady Miria enough, though I am always trying. Fair enough. Bum, ba -dum, bum. What's the matter with you, Lamina? Why are you so upset? Oh, wait, I know. Your mother doesn't love you anymore, and you realize you have no friends. Ah, not like that at all! But I don't have time to explain it to you with monosyllabic words. Yeah, whatever, Lamina. You're just the same spoiled brat you've always been. Lamina can't stand to be away from her mother for too long. She's nothing more than a child. A ditzy, codependent little girl. Wow, this is a really rude person. I mean, not incorrect, I think, but really rude. Ooh, hey, can I have that? What? This is why no one likes you, Lamina. Because <laughs> you keep everyone from freaking taking treasure. Now, you wait just a minute, hero. These treasures are mine. You can't take them without my expressed written consent. Gimme. I need your expressed written consent. Please and thank you. Going on over here. Borgen suddenly appeared in the middle of vain using the magic of teleportation. That's one of the most difficult spells to use, so how was Borgen able to cast it? And how was he able to teleport all four of his chins at once? Oof. Rude. Long time ago, when vain was still floating in the sky, the people who lived here he never looked up into the heavens. They always looked down upon the people of the earth, figuratively and literally seems difficult. They'd have to, like, walk to the edge of the island and actually, like, stare over, down at the, like... It wasn't until Vane was knocked to the ground by the Magic Emperor that the people of Vane looked to the skies. It was only then that they learned to appreciate the beauty of the blue star. 
The vein fell to the ground and panic overcame the citizens of the city. It was the head of the magic guild, Mia Alsa, who restored calm with a single statement. She said, Look at the blue star. It's beautiful, isn't it? She was right. People of Vane realized that they had taken its beauty for granted. Pretty good story. Pretty, pretty decent story. All right, let's go down to these houses. A weapon shop. I want it. Yes, please. We have a multitude of weapons for the magically challenged. Wait, the fuck did you just call me? Thick as Ronfar, heavy as Borgen. That's. What the fuck, game? That's rude as shit. <laughs> uh, 125, one attack. Okay, so it hits really hard, but it's slow as shit. Or we could just take a... You know what? I think we might experiment a little bit. Ritual Mace, Magic Flame, Wind, Water, Thunder, Wake. Pretty sure we have all of those. Right? Water, thunder, sky. Yes. Ritual mace. Okay, we're gonna equip the rune sword and the ritual mace. We can sell the bastard sword, the golden mace, and the spirit mace. I'm not going to go through selling all the other stuff right now, because I don't think we need to. And we are going to buy a Smash Saber, just, uh, just to see. Um, kind of experiment with that and see how that goes. I doubt it's going to be better, but... In a long time since I've seen Borgen around here, somehow fatter than ever. You know he dropped out of the Magic Guild? Never found out the reason why. Probably because the guild cafeteria didn't have a large enough selection of desserts. Okay. We get it. He's fat. Are there any other deciding factors other than the fact that he's fat and ugly that we can discuss? Morgan floated into the guild mansion a while ago with some suspicious characters. No, just fat. That's it. That's, that's all he's got. He's just fat. It's like, I get it. We're really hammering that home, though. <laughs> I've come from Meridia to see the sights here in historic vein. These ancient structures are so full of romantic tales and such rich history. But what was the deal with that fat guy who showed up a while ago? Jesus. Guys. He floated around here with his pack of followers like he owned the place. I have some business to take care of, but we'll definitely talk more about this later. The city is beautiful, but that floating fatso was grotesque. <laughs> Yikes. The, the fat hate is real here. If there was ever the perfect candidate for a stomach stapling, he is it, dear Lord Jesus. Have we mentioned he's fat? I think we're probably going to hear that another 30 times before we actually meet Borgen. Hey, have you heard of the Magic Library? It's fun to play hide-and-seek there because it's so big. I'm going to go there later with my friends and we're going to play all day long. I haven't seen... No, I haven't seen him yet in the game. No. Hey there! The Magic Library is not a playground. How many times do I have to tell you? You idiots! Oh, oh, okay. For clarity, I've played the game before, so I have seen him before. It's just been a very long time. So, yeah, it won't be it won't be a brand new experience, but it'll be a uh, like. I mean, I have this vague memory of what he looks like, but it's like eh. we can't be sure that he's like really fast, fat, unless they mention it like ten more times. You're you're right. Like, really need to drive that nail home. Do you remember the fire spell you taught me earlier? I still don't know how to cast it. Is there an easier spell I could try instead? What are you talking about? That's the easiest spell of all. I was casting it in the womb. And don't you know that boys aren't supposed to give up? Now stop whining and start practicing. 
toxicity. I didn't think that fire spell you taught me was easy at all, Miss Lamina, but I'll keep trying. It sounds dangerous as fuck, casting fire spells in the womb. It's fine. It's fine. But Lamina, the magic library is our playground because Lady Miria said we could play there. Oh, mother. She's always letting these kids get away with murder. Literally? Magic is classified into four basic systems that correspond to the elements. There are wind, fire, water, and earth magics, the four elements that comprise the world. Did you hear that, Miss Lamina? I can recite the theory of magic. You're a hard-working little guy, aren't you? If it were up to me, you'd be the mascot of the Magic Guild. <laughs> He's good at memorizing things, but he doesn't have any magical abilities at all. Alright, don't be muggle-shaming people, Lamina. Jeez. I've been going to the library every day to study magic. You should come with me sometime. It's a kind offer, but you need to work on using magic instead of studying it. That's fair. That's somewhat fair, I suppose. Yo! Famous Dragon Masters. Some of the most popular Dragon Masters in the history of our world include Leon, the mighty Gale, who fought his foes with the blinding force of a hurricane. This exact book, I think, was in Lunar 1 in, in uh, Home Dude's Tower. Gaul, the Iron Hand, who could fell the largest man with a single swing of his granite fists. Nato, the singing swordsman who often burst into song while decimating his enemies. Dine, the hero of the Heresy War. And Alex, the last of the Dragon Masters. Okay, obviously not the exact same book, because that last part was not. I think, actually, the last part had more about Dine. Hey, hero, I wonder if you could be a Dragon Master, too. Cha-cha-cha. This, this is, uh, this is... What books? What's that book? Are these symbols? I can't read this book at all. Of course not, Hero. How are you supposed to read all those weird runes? There's no way you... There's no way that any of you would be able to read this ancient book. Because I can't read it either. Wow. <laughs> I can't make sense of this. Neither can I, Hero. What a dumb book. I'm the head librarian. Welcome to Vane's home of tomes. Our selection of literature is unmatched in all the world. Please take your time and read through a few of our selections. You'll find them enlightening. I probably will. Take your time and explore the library. We have books on virtually any subject. This place used to be called the Magic Library, and only magicians could enter. But the premier of the Magic Guild, Lady Maria Alsa, turned it into a public library. Now anyone can come here, and frankly, I think it's much better that way. Not too long ago, I couldn't have come into this library because I can't use magic. I'm grateful that Lady Miria. F I'm grateful to Lady Miria for getting rid of that archaic rule. Hell yeah, Lady Miria. All right, what do we got? I heard that a long time ago, ordinary folks weren't allowed to come in here and read. But now it's different. Anyone can read these books, regardless of their social social status, with a few exceptions. That's right. See those books on that shelf over there? They belong to me. And if you read them without paying the rental fee, you'll suffer the wrath of the guild. What the fuck? Now, no matter what a person's background, they can read every book in the library. Well, all of them except for Lamina's private collection. Be careful. What the fuck, Lamina? Till a few years ago, I was completely illiterate. Lady Miria took time each day to teach me how to read. I feel like the entire world has opened up to me thanks to her. Miria is the kindest and most generous person I've ever met. Now that I have learned to read, I decided to improve myself in other ways. I think I'll start by learning how to write. That's fair. Lunar in the Blue Star, Past, Present, and Future. The history of humanity is the history of war. Mankind fought so furiously that the Blue Star itself was destroyed in the conflict. When we were brought to this world by the goddess Althena, we were given a second chance. A second chance to preserve our world and live in peace. We must learn to take care of this world and each other. This book is really old, Hero. It's practically falling apart. Ah, oh, no. No. Ah! I didn't mean to. Please don't. Ah. Alright. Okay, so nothing along the bottom shelf. Looks like...
this is this famous Dragon Master. So nothing along the bottom row. Nothing with a staircase in front of it. The first Dragon Master, Louis, descended from this land from the Blue Star with the Goddess. The footprint of his very first step on Lunar can still be found somewhere in this world. Can it? That's kind of cool. How long ago was that? What the fuck? You know, books are the greatest asset we have. With books, I can discover what happened in this world before I was born. I'd love to meet the person who invented the written word. Ask for his autograph. Heh <laughs> heh. What the fuck? You're going to write a lot of books about this era of history. It's such an exciting time. I wonder what will be written. Will it excite the readers of the future as much as it excites me? Hot girls in the great outdoors. What the fuck? Why is this game so horny? There are several bub public bathing spots throughout the world, including Althena's Spring in the Illusion Woods and the Man-Made Lake at the Water Ruins, where hot girls voluntarily take off their clothes to bathe in the buff. Ugh. I already knew men were pigs by the way they always talk to my chest instead of me, but this book confirms it. Yes. How to absolutely positively win at gambling. Don't gamble and you won't lose. What kind of advice is that? Of course you won't lose if you don't gamble. But who wants to go through life playing it safe? I'm playing to win, baby. Life on Lunar. There are many creatures other than humans in this land of Lunar. The most obvious example is the race of beastmen, which are strongly similar to humans. There are also the four dragons, which serve Althena and the Vile Tribe, about which is very little is known. We still calling them the Vile Tribe a thousand years later? That's kind of fucked. Tame and train your cat. Filled with tips and techniques to make the most disagreeable pussy eat out of your hand. I don't like it when they say it like that. <laughs> hey, Chief, don't you want to borrow this book? I want to see if it's humanly possible to turn Ruby into an agreeable feline. If you call me a cat one more time, I'll scratch your face off, so help me. I mean, you're kind of proving the point. The Wilderness Survival Guide and Cookbook. Learn to survive in any type of harsh environment. Also includes scrumptious monster recipes. Hey, hero, we should try the recipe for sand shark sashimi. What do you mean? With all the sand sharks near our house, we could eat like kings. I mean, actually, I'd try it. Magic, its origins and history. A way to move heavy objects, whether or not one possesses considerable strength. A way to escape dangerous situations, whether or not one can move quickly. These simple desires of men led to the discovery of magic. And now, because of magic, mankind can achieve things never before imagined. Look at all the dust on the cover of this book. No one in vain reads anything like this. I live in a city of magic where no one cares about magic. It's deplorable, I tell you. Aw, poor, poor Lamina. The Blue Star, humanity's first home. There are many rumors of a way to travel to the Blue Star, but they have never been confirmed. If such a method truly existed, it would most likely have been discovered by now. Ah, I double-clicked, apparently. Close encounter of the Blue Star kind. I was abducted by a flying saucer from the Blue Star and placed in a strange room, where bizarre creatures with large eyes performed demented experiments upon my bottom. What? That face from Lucia is actually great. What? I, that could be... Okay, I actually kind of, like... That could totally be, like, an, an emote, right? Just like, what? <laughs> That's great. I love that. You feel like it would taste like gator? Sand shark? Mm, I can see that. Beginner's Guide to Magic, Volume 1, The Spirit of Fire. Welcome to the exciting world of fire magic. Before reading on, please make sure you have one flame staff, one large bucket of water, and one flame retardant magician's robe. The Goddess Althena, Birth and Rebirth. The Goddess Althena is born and reborn into our world where she watches over us, but centuries often pass in between her visitations. Is the Goddess becoming more confident in our ability to live peacefully with each other, or are we abandoned children? Festivals of Sacrifice The earliest festivals were held to offer human sacrifices to the gods of war. 
Today's festivals are held to honor Althena, and instead of human lives, we offer her singing and dancing. Althena revels in watching her children celebrate their existence. This book is right on the mark. In fact, the Midoriya Carnival was originally an offering to the goddess. Cool. What are you doing, hero? The treasure boxes in here all belong to me, and that makes them off-limits to you. Okay. I gotta pull up the damn thing, because this is like the third one now. Uno momento. I gotta pull up my notes. Because otherwise, I'm gonna forget about all of these freaking things. Pleasure. Tests. Thing. What's the... There's, we found one in the library, one in the caves, and one next to the magic guild. So. I'm assuming there will be a day when Lamina allows us to fucking open the chests. A Woman's Recycling Guide, Volume 6. Don't toss that pad. I do not want to read the rest of this. <laughs> this book was a complete waste of paper. I think I'm going to recycle it. Hiya. History of Lunar, Volume 1. The existence of the Vile Tribe was confirmed during the terrible battle in which Vane fell from the sky. The behaviors and desires of the Vile Tribe were still shrouded in darkness. The Vile thing? What do you mean? This is such, like, bullshit history. They knew the Vile Tribe existed plenty of time before the attack on Vane. But it is clear that they have not chosen to coexist peacefully with humanity. I scribbled a note in the margin. What does it say? This is wrong. The Vile Tribe has left the frontier, and now lives alongside the rest of Althena's children. Facia! Hey! Our old pal Facia. Facia, who's that? Oop. The superiority of magic. Without magic, all with magic, all things become possible. With magic, the world can be ruled and controlled. Please keep the noise down. I'm trying to read. I'm reading every book in this library so I can become a great scholar and impress the ladies. I'm learning about the goddess Althena and the blue star and the four dragons and a bunch of other stuff that we've already read about that's bad information. <laughs> and this is why it's very, very, very important to source your information and be open to learning contradictory things. Sorry, I don't have time to chat with you today. I have to keep studying. Uh. I had to pause. I come to get her a book. I did, I did. I want to have one with lots of pictures. I like pretty pictures. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with liking pretty pictures. I'm trying to get smart enough to use that magic stuff. But Pa don't believe in me. I believe in you. Good luck. There's nothing wrong with trying to get smart and stuff. All my friends are late. That gives me more time to decide what we'll play today. Hide and seek, maybe, or bookshelf climbing, or maybe a book search battle. Didn't your parents teach you that a library is not the place for fun and games? Okay, Lamina, since you're kicking us out, we'll go play in the Cave of Trial instead. Uh, on second thought, why don't you stay here and play... Just promise me you won't go into the Cave of Trial. It's too dangerous in there. Maybe seal it off? Taking order out of this mess of books is tough. But it's my job, so I have to try and keep things straightened up as best I can. Poetry. What is the color of love? What is the shape of love? Where is my heart? I yearn to know the answers. Hear me, O oh goddess, beautiful and true. Tell me. Teach me. Please, do not charge me. What the fuck? What the fuck? What? This is Lamine. What? 
Oh no! Why did I leave my poem in this book? Don't read another word! Stop! <laughs> Until I read the last line, I didn't even know it was Lamina. One of the pages is falling out of this. Hey! Hey! Lamina's Brumide. Lucky we found this! Now we know Lamina is a closet geek after all. Hey, I prefer to think of myself as studious. Besides, by reading, I learned how to blast smart aleck rodents with fire. Oh, wait a minute, Lamina. I was just kidding. Why don't we all calm down? Lamina? At least I didn't call you a freak and a geek. It could be worse. Oh no, Ruby. What did you say? All right, that's it. Feel the burn, you big jerks. We're in a library. Oh my god. Ron Farr every time. It's like they decided they were going to make one one sprite that was the toasted sprite and they were just like well we know we're gonna do Ronfar so let's just have Ronfar literally be the only person who gets burned uh Lamina perhaps you could take a little more time with that whole aiming thing I mean I think she feels fine with her decision Ronfar let's be honest Lamina's bromide sunset breeze Look at that. Sitting in a window reading a book. That's dope. Magic Theory Advanced Edition. An in-depth exploration of the mechanics and motions of spectacular spells. Uh, I think this volume is beyond your understanding. Let's try another one, shall we? Condescending much? The Seat in the Sky. The True Story of the Magic Guild Scandal. Ooh, I scraped my throat there. This book is fascinating. It yanks the covers right off the guild's dirtiest secrets. I'm a good girl, but there are times when I wouldn't mind being in this book. What the fuck? Oh, it's, uh, gotcha. Big business for small broads. What? Oh, this is a great book. The author is an orphan who fought against all odds and soon became the most successful merchant in the world. Her story made me cry. Lamina's personal bookshelf. Rental rates. All books owned by Lamina are only available for rental at a price of 100 silver per day. Oh, don't mind that price list. I'll let you guys read my books for free. Aren't you happy? Thanks, Lamina. Introduction to History. When reading any historical document, it's very important to remember that the contents of the document will never be entirely accurate, nor can they ever be. History is shaped by those who record it and by the inevitable influence of time. That's fair. Deep Thoughts, Volume 1 Nothing is more senseless in this world than the act of war. The goddess mourns when her own children willingly end each other's precious lives. Not a hard concept. Inspirations, Volume 1 The future of each man is within his grasp. He must only reach out and take hold of it. The sealed city. Across the sea is the holy city of C city even of Pentagulia, Althena's tower, in which the goddess Althena dwelled, was once located in the holy city. The goddess is said to have sealed a great evil within its walls, never to be unleashed. Ah, I held the button. The legends of the goddess Althena. All of us were brought to this land from the blue star, guided by the goddess Althena. The blessings of Althena exist in everyone, planted like seeds. They say that Althena awaits for these seeds to sprout, ultimately to bear fruit. That's fair. Oh, there's a second treasure chest here. Hero, I never thought you were the type to go for a five-finger discount. Well, who have you been hanging out with? Two in the library. Get away from that box! It's a special treasure of vain! Understanding Magic, Volume 1. Magic requires great powers of concentration. To develop these skills, attempt the following. Eat two boxes of laxatives and concentrate on not using the bathroom. Ignore the noises, which will soon emerge from your colon, and maintain your focus. Don't. Don't do, do this. And don't do that stupid shit where they, like... The, you know, the stuff we, they give you when you're going to do a colonoscopy. People people doing the whole, like, I'm going to I'm gonna do a cleanse, right? And drink a whole thing. Do not do that. That will fuck you up. My god. It 
Ignore the noises, which will soon come, soon emerge from your colon and maintain your focus. Magicians with high fiber diets should not attempt this exercise under any circumstances. The History of Vane, Volume 1. Long ago, Vane was a city held aloft in the skies with the power of magic. Only those people blessed with magical ability lived there, and they conducted intense research. The Magic Guild of Vane was the most powerful influence in the known world. The Vanished Dragon Master. The goddess Althena keeps an eternal watch over our world, and when the goddess is reborn into our world, the Dragon Master stands close at her side. While the goddess is constantly reborn unto us, the Dragon Master is not. But when the goddess vanishes, so does the Dragon Master. Ah! Keep accidentally pressing the button. Secret wall? Common Sense by Miria Alsa. A person's worth is not determined by whether or not they have magical powers. A person's worth is not determined by whether or not they have money. A person's worth is determined by the sum total of their hopes, their dreams, and their actions. Legends and Lore of the Blue Star The blue star that shines in the sky is our ancestral home. Our ancestors were guided to this land from the blue star by the goddess Althena. Hey, someone left a scribbled note in the book. I think it says... Loth Secret Guild Spy. My secret is safe with... Yeah, heh, heh, heh. Dang. Can't make out the words between... With all these jelly stains. At least I think it's jelly. Ew, I'm putting this back. Okay. What? Cloth Secret Guild Spy. What? In reality, your money is absolutely your value. Right? Well, it depends on your... The, the determination and the definition of the word value, right? I don't think your ISP is going to provide your house with internet for having dreams and good values. Well, yes, obviously, right? But again, the determination there is the definition that you're using. If you're if you're talking about your financial value, yes. Yeah, that is absolutely. <laughs> yes, money is absolutely your financial value. But, you know, like your value to history, right? Your value to society, right? Your value to culture. Magic Emperor Galleon. Galleon, one of the original four heroes, had very strong and unusual magical power. He used this power to take control of Althena and plunge the world into darkness. To this day, no one knows Galleon's motivations for doing what he did. I mean, we had a good idea what his motivations were. The History of Vane, Volume 2 Long ago, Vane was a city held aloft in the skies with the power of magic, but it was made to fall by the goddess Althena, who was under the control of Galleon, the Magic Emperor. It is said the influence of the Magic Guild disappeared when Vane plunged to Earth. As the citizens of Vane relocated to cities around the world, they took their knowledge of magic with them, and what was once considered an arcane art became almost commonplace. In this new world, the Magic Guild was considered quaint. Interesting. Alright, well, that was a fun little romp. Cool. I, a lot of book reading, but also a couple of, like, little, uh, little interactions with Lamina, and a couple of, like, little, uh, little, you know, things that we weren't 100% aware of. Some strange visitors walked into the Magic Guild a while ago. I wonder who they were. They're wearing un unfamiliar outfits. Perhaps they've come from here from Arivia? Hey there, kiddo. How's the money collection for Vane's future going? Are you saving your silver? Sorry, no time to talk. My mother's in big trouble. Although, if you have a few coins to spare, I'd be glad to take them off your hands. Wow. Sorry, kiddo, but I just got back from a very expensive tour of Meribia's seedy back streets. Thinking why? Are you thinking why? Hey, it's a statue. I, ooh. 
Um. Top left. One. Top. No one's supposed to open those without my permission. Now get away from them. I'm, I'm mad at you, Lamina. Lamina is forever spoiling my daughter with attention. I suppose they can relate to each other as neither of them have siblings. I just don't want my daughter to be spoiled into adulthood, or I'll have to own her, disown her. Will you? Lamina, Lamina, you're back! Show me one of your magic tricks, please! I mean, she says please. Well, I have a special one that I've been saving, and it'll only cost... Don't tell me you're going to charge a kid to see one of your cheap tricks. As I was about to say, it'll only cost you a big smile. How about it? Sure. Thanks, Lamina. Will you show me another trick sometime? Peace. All right. Ooh. Hey, this is my home, the mansion of the Magic Guild of Vane. These walls are filled with the history of our world. Well, isn't it great? This place sure is big, but it's kind of run down, isn't it, Hero? I mean, look at that hole in the roof. That sign over there is broken. The Magic Guild is so prestigious. Why can't they afford a carpenter? Hey, Miss Lamina. How are you? We're really good. Will you please tell us another story? Do you hear that, guys? Lamina tells stories to these children. Tell me, little guy. What kind of stories does Lamina tell you? Lamina tells us stories about how of how to spend money without wasting it and how to hoard money in really good hiding places where no one will ever find it, and how to haggle down the price of everything. Well, aren't those just delightful tales? <laughs> Alright. That is going to be the end of this video. If you're watching on Twitch, stick around. We're going to keep playing. If you're watching on YouTube, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time for more Lunar 2 Eternal Blue. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.